Hey folks, I'm Chuck Black, and in this lesson, I'm going to tell you why you should learn Python, and I really do mean it this time. So I did a poll recently on Twitter, and in this Twitter poll, I asked, how are you doing in your 2022 resolutions to learn Python as a programming language? And surprisingly, 20% of you said that it's going awesome, and that's great. But the remaining 80% we're split between going okay, hardly going at all, and what's Python. And so I wanted to create this video to help you to really be convinced that you need to go out and learn Python. Now what you're looking at right now is output that you will be able to create yourself if you go through my 52 Weeks of Python course that's available on YouTube and in some other places as well, but it's free and it will teach you how to do all of this stuff. And it, it, the course of the course will take you from the very beginning of learning the basics to learning more advanced stuff and even going into uh, user interface stuff and things of that nature. So uh, I just want to encourage you, if you've started and hadn't succeeded uh, and you want to have this ability, have it be part of your tool belt going forward for your career, then stick with me and learn this 52 weeks of Python stuff. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you click on the playlist called 52 weeks of Python, you can see there's a bunch of introductory stuff that takes you from the very basics. So if you've never done anything before, we go over all of the basics of programming in Python. We then begin to go through some of the more advanced stuff, talking about why everything is an object how to debug, list comprehensions, and things of that nature. Sets, we talk about name tuples. Then we go into data, stuff like JSON and XML and YAML and things of that nature. We even spend some time on regular expressions. We get into networking with NetMiko and Napalm. We take a break at 30 weeks and we go through and review everything. Then we go over Scappy and Nmap to finish that stuff on networking. Then we go into object-oriented programming, and I teach you all about that. Then we get into Flask, which is where we begin to build this Quokka Prime thing, actually. So we talk about Flask. We will then talk about databases, and we'll go through different types of databases. We use Mongo in Quokka Prime. We're getting up to week 50, 51, 52. When we get to week 52, we do a review or attempt to review it. And then I'm having so much fun, I keep going. And I do weeks 54, etc. cetera, recursion, uh, distributed stuff. Uh, then I go into some hacking stuff and we talk about that. We talk about keeping status over time in the database. Uh, and then we actually even do some stuff on Java. We do a couple weeks on Java and a couple weeks on Go. So that's what you get with this 52 weeks of Python. So let's basically review the architecture that we will be building in this course. We start with a simple host monitor and display, and then we break it into a RESTful API that has a web service, and the display is getting the data from that web service, and the host monitor is putting the data into it. Then we add services and devices, and at this point in time, we have a fully functioning REST API, and we're driving these user interfaces that you see here from that. Then we move the data out to where it should be into a database. And so we're going to store the stuff in the database, and that will make it a real application. Then we build a user interface. If you're not interested in this, you don't have to worry about it, but this is a browser-based thing. There's a lot of uh, JavaScript. There's a fair amount of JavaScript code, but a lot of contributed stuff as well. That's the user interface piece of it. Then for the workers, the thing to do port scans and stuff, uh, this is where we do messaging. And so uh, in this example here that I'm showing you, I'm going to click on a button that says, get me the port scan results for this particular device in my network. It's going to send a message out to the worker, and the worker is going to perform this function and return the information. Remember, this is what we are building at towards the end, at least the last third of the 52 weeks of Python. You will be able to do this as well and build something that looks like this. So really briefly, how do I actually run this stuff? Well, I tried to keep everything as simple as possible in this course. So at the time where you are done 
We're going to go to the Quokka Prime and we're going to run the Quokka Prime server. That's what I've done right there. And also in this course, we'll talk about the monitors and I'm running the monitors. Now I've done those two things. I can see that it's working. Next, what I will do is I will go to the directory that has the workers and I will go and I will run the worker, which is going to listen for requests and spawn things appropriately. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is the browser based user interface. There's a lot of uh, framework code for uh, all of the user interface stuff here. I'm just showing you the stuff that's running right now. That was server, monitor, worker, and this is the user interface. We have to wait here for quite a while, so I'm going to actually pop up the terminal based um, versions of showing you the data so we can run these at the same time. And if you're not interested in a real user interface, you can just do these terminal based things. And so this is the terminal based host display that has all of the information about hosts. I'm going to create another window and then I'm going to go to starting the device information. And there's my device display. Lastly, as you guessed it, I'm going to do the service display and I will get that started and put it there make it look nice and now you can see if I go back the user interface is actually started and I can bounce around and look at the various pieces of the user interface. You can see I'm keeping graphs of information over time because I store it in the database in that way. I have tables which is a uh, browser-based representation of the terminal stuff. There's some more uh, of the uh, nice printouts and yeah that's how we run it. Now you probably want to know about the code. You can see I'm in PyCharm. I have folders for monitors, for server, uh, user interface, etc., and that will correspond to the uh, architecture. I did want to point out that all of this code is available on GitHub. So if you go to my GitHub repositories, you can look for Quokka Prime, or you can go there directly, and all of this code is freely available for you to download. You can run it or just look at it, whatever you choose to do. So looking at the architecture, here's my monitors. Here's my server. If I look there, that's the thing that I've highlighted. User interface package, that is what you uh, have seen up in the upper left corner of this. And then if you look at the workers, that's in the bottom right. And so that is how I've structured the code. And so if we look inside the monitors there, you can see host service and device monitor, just like we talked about before. There's the Quokka server, that's the main piece of code that does stuff in there. The UI terminal, there's device display, host display, and service display. You saw those printed out. There's the real user interface, of which there's a little bit of JavaScript code that I wrote, but a whole lot of framework code. Uh, here's the code, my host monitor is just a regular Python program. It has a lot of functions. It has a main loop that it's going through and doing things over and over again. Same is true for host display, except the thing that it does is it prints stuff using print functionality. The workers are listening for stuff and maybe if more interest is the host where we have git and put and we're listening for these particular endpoints. And so that is an overview of all of this code. It's really just basically Python. And uh, yeah, it starts from here in 52 weeks of Python, and we gradually build it more and more till we end up with something like this. So let me ask you a question. Would you like to be able to write code like this? If your answer is yes, then you could do worse than to take my 52 weeks of Python course. If you have a short attention span, then you probably haven't listened even this far, but if you would prefer, the first 30 lessons of 52 weeks are available in 10 minute versions. They're condensed, they go into less detail, but they're more rapid fire, quick hit to tell you about each of the topics. So you can do that as well. Look for the 52 weeks of Python in 10 minute sessions playlist on my YouTube channel. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you are motivated to be able to do stuff like this. This touches on just about everything you need as a software developer to understand in order to be you know, legitimate in your skills with respect to software development. Hopefully this made sense to you. If you do have questions, let me know either in the YouTube channel comments for the videos or on Twitter 
um, or however. So thank you so much for listening and watching, and I wish you all the best in your endeavor to become a software developer.